Good afternoon, and welcome to the Board of County Commissioners meeting for Tuesday, September 17, 2019. I am John Hutchings, the chair of the board, and to my left is the vice chair, Commissioner Gary Edwards. To my right is Commissioner Ty Menser. To his right is La, Boni La, Boni <laughs> La Bonita Bomar, clerk of the board. And sitting on the side is our county manager, Romero Chavez, and to his right is deputy prosecuting attorney, Elizabeth Petrich. As I call the meeting to order, we'll start, please, with the Pledge of Allegiance, led by uh, Vice Chair Gary Edwards. And I, in turn, will ask uh, Mr. Pettit to lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> <clears throat> With that, uh, do we have, uh, is there a motion to approve today's agenda? I would so move to approve the agenda for September 17th, 2019. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve today's agenda. Uh, any additions or amendments? No, sir. Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. And uh, regarding the board meeting minutes from September 10th, yes, 2019. Sir. I would, I would move to approve the board meeting minutes from September 10th, 2019. <clears throat> Second. Been moved and seconded to uh, accept the board meeting minutes from the 10th of September. Any uh, changes or no, sir. corrections? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. That takes us to item number one on the agenda, which is the opportunity for the public to address the board. And so before we get into that, I'll just kind of read through a list of expectations. Uh, or guiding principles. Number one, when you're addressing the board, uh, this is your chance to address the board, not our, a chance to engage in conversation. So we will just merely listen and take notes and staff will follow up when needed. Uh, but address your comments to the board, please, not to the audience. And <clears throat> speakers are limited to th a total of three minutes and La Bonita, <laughs> La Bonita Bomar just today has the timer, it'll show three minutes and it'll time down to zero. You'll hear a chime, and that's your, that indicates your time is up. Uh, you're not allowed to donate your speaking time to another person. We reserve the right <clears throat> to restrict a person's opportunity to address the board for good cause. Please, if you haven't already, silence your phones. No comments that are lewd or offensive to a reasonable person. We ask you please be respectful. No outbursts. No comments that are commercial in nature, uh, such as a promotion for a for-profit business. Any materials that you supply to the county can be uh, considered a public record subject to the pub public release upon request pursuant to the Public Records Act, Chapter 42.56 RCW. And also <laughs> remarks about uh, pending land use permits <clears throat> or similar matters that could eventually come before the board on appeal well, would not be appropriate. <clears throat> what I'll do is uh, I'll call the name of the person coming to attend or coming to speak to the, um, the board. And uh, when you get here, please uh, in, introduce yourself, your name and where you live in the county. And then uh, as you're coming up, I will also let the other person know who's next in line so we can kind of keep a stream going. So first on deck, or first to speak rather, is uh, Mr. Jan, Tibet Jan Tibetan. Uh, followed by uh, Sidney Clausen. <clears throat> Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Jan Tvetten. I live in, uh, in Rochester. I've been there for 50 years. <clears throat> I'd like to address the issue of uh, review, go for reviews with the, with the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife. I uh, have here my uh, HCP and the uh, prairie studies, and the HCP is about uh, 75 pages long. And uh, the notification you get from the county when you have had your screening for gophers gives you three options. First option, you can work with the county, and they will work with you as Fish and Wildlife. Second option is you work directly with Fish and Wildlife. And third option is that you sit and wait until the county HCP is approved. I have gone uh, 
This is the second time around. I chose option number two. I have turned in my my HCB to the to U.S. Fish and Wildlife. I did it the day after, uh, three weeks ago, when the chairman reported that the uh, I hadn't submitted it, which was a correct statement. I was hoping and waiting that perhaps it would be some statement from U.S. Fish and Wildlife whether they were going to staff the review or not. As of today, three weeks after I submitted it, I, uh, in the submittal letter, I asked for uh, an estimate of time when we could expect something to happen because you've got to get the uh, financing and all those kinds of things uh, in order to. And uh, as of today, I have not heard anything. Uh, uh, I recognize that the, the, this isn't the county's fault. This is uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife. But I think you are in somewhat of a problem, too, in that you have announced three methods, or one method that people can take, and that is to go to work directly with U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and our Fish and Wildlife is pretty evasive on that. They say they will accept the application, but they will not staff it. Now, uh, it's one and the same thing to me. It means that they won't do anything. So uh, I am here uh, asking for your continued support uh, as we struggle with fish and wildlife to, to get these uh, applications reviewed and that we can move forward. I do not think it was the intent uh, of... Uh, Congress, when they approved the Endangered Species Act, that they were going to hold up individuals from building their houses for seven years. This kind of ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sidney Clausen, <clears throat> followed by uh, Sharon Coons. I'm Sydney Clausen. I live at 11935 Case Road Southwest, and I am here to discuss a property located at 12643 Case Road Southwest that has been under scrutiny by the county for several years for code violations. Um, right now, I'm going to go through sort of a chronology of my participation in this. A year ago, I filed a code violation concern with Thurston County Code Enforcement Division. On August 27th of year, this year, a notice of public hearing was scheduled to address the unpermitted activity. That same day, a notice appeared on the hearing sign notifying us that the hearing had been postponed. That same day, in the PM, I spoke with a Ms. Davis with Thurston County Code Enforcement regarding my concerns and questioning why the hearing had been postponed. Ms. Davis acknowledged ongoing investigation of code violations by the county for several years and that the hearing had been canceled at the request of the Faith Harvest Helpers who reside at the property as they were seeking pro bono legal counsel. On Wednesday, August 28th, I emailed Brett Burrs at Thurston County voicing my concerns about the unpermitted activity and requesting a response. Tuesday, September 3rd, an article in, was published in the front page of the Olympian regarding the neighbor's concerns over the property. On September 4th, I contacted attorney Heather Burgess and asked her to attempt to get a response from Brett Burrs since I had not received any communication. She wrote an email to him. On September 6th, Brett Burrs sends an email to Ms. Burgess merely saying he will let her know of any action taken by Thurston County regarding code violation. He fails to address any of the concerns that we have addressed. On September 6th, Ms. Burgess responds to Brett Burr's email. <coughs> September 6th, Kern Rexius, my neighbor, phones Ty Menser's office and requests a callback regarding the ongoing unpermitted activity on the Faith Harvest Helper's property. In the PM, he receives a callback from the office saying that they will look into it and get back to him by Tuesday, September 10th, or Wednesday, September 11th. He never receives a response or callback. Included in the folder I am providing for you are copies of the emails I discussed, a copy of the Olympian article, photos of the property in question, and a copy of the flyer 
the Faith Harvest Helpers publish. A look at the organization's website discusses using the quote, pole barns as worship centers. The lack of response to our concerns and the neighbor's concerns by the county is unacceptable and smacks of an attempt to prevent transparency. The county needs to enforce a stop work order until the subject property can be fully evaluated and any and all code violations fully remedied. Go ahead and finish your sentence, ma'am, your thoughts. To this date, the Faith Harvest Helpers continue to work on the pole barns and dig trenches across the property unabated. Those of us concerned are requesting an explicit recounting from the county as to what plan of action they are going to take to enforce county codes on this property. And I would like to submit this. Poll. Yeah, you send it over to the uh, county manager. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Sharon Kuntz, followed by John Pettit. <coughs> <coughs> rather I didn't do that right into the mic. Can you hear me? It doesn't sound right. Yeah, okay, thanks. Hi, Commissioner. Sharon Kuntz, 3716, um, 85th Northwest in Olympia. I'm back this week because last week I didn't have time to address some hard facts that I think need discussing. Miller Sylvania State Park, with its 500,000 annual visitors, is under serious threat by the proposed massive 24 7 truck and train cargo transfer center at the Maytown Rocky Prairie site. The new buyers of that site, as you know, want to, you to put their request for a comprehensive plan amendment on the docket so that the zoning can be changed from rural residential to industrial. One of their claims is that there will be tons of new jobs at this new intermodal center. First, you should know that in a recent study from University of Illinois' Center for Urban Development, um, I'm sorry, and Economic Development, found that 81% of new hires were temporary employees at these kind of um, intermodal centers and one in four workers there needed government assistance. Only 4% had health insurance. As you know, temp workers, it's a great way for companies to make more money. But that can't be what you want for your South County citizens and your constituents. I don't think you do. Think of the costs also to the county from this situation, in addition to the ones that stem from uninsured, impoverished workers. What we will gain from this proposal instead of lots of great jobs is a ruined park experience, trains coupling and uncoupling all night, and constant rumbling of the at least 4,000 trucks we hear per day. And don't forget the massive expense that county and state taxpayers will incur trying to um, clean up from the road damage. Because, and look at tiny Elwood, Illinois. It's got now more than $30 million in debt after they um, welcomed wholeheartedly, an intermodal warehouse center enthusiastically welcomed it, and it's now destroyed their infrastructure. These are just a few of the things that we could face, a few reasons that putting this on the docket just doesn't make sense in terms of staff time and county money. It's very rare a reasonable person, I think, would look at this site and say, oh, look, it's right next to a fish and wildlife area, okay, and it's used by hunters and hikers and birders, and it's right near an historic uh, park, which brings in millions of dollars of revenue to the county, and it's right by other wildlands, and it's just on the scenic byway that the Economic Development C Council touts and, and brags about. Well, let's wipe out all the threatened species and all the park experience and the scenic byway and all that stuff. What a great idea. I don't think it's a great idea, and I don't think any sane person really would think it's a great idea. Just as another uh, point, we've been now told by a group that ran North Point, the company trying to put this one in our community, a company that ran it out of their community, that we should be showing up in droves to meetings like this. The, the Friends of Rocky Prairie's steering committee thought about that and thought you probably wouldn't like us much if we did that in major um, meetings stretch for an extra three hours every day. We don't think that's a great idea. But the people are getting antsy. They want to talk to you about this. They want to tell you their stories. They want to hear the other side. They want to just have a town hall meeting. And I think that would be really wise. Let everyone express themselves in one place at one time to you instead of making these meetings longer. So, so far we're coming in one or two at a time and we'd like to continue <laughs> that and not drive you crazy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, John Pettit. <clears throat> I feel a little taller than someone else. That's good. <laughs> good afternoon, commissioners. My name is John Pettit. I live in East Olympia. 
today I did appreciate watching some agenda uh, meet setting meeting and uh, a little bit of uh, what ended up being a vague response to a major concern of mine. Uh, vague in regards to not being specific as to addressing the more specifics of what the outcome might be, but it was something that at least addressed some of my concern. Uh, in addressing my main issue, which once again is the placement of a new proposed courthouse, I'm going to encourage you to, as you consider that you may need to uh, disband your current program and restart a program if that's what you want to accomplish, uh, then I'm going to encourage you, uh, obviously we need to have uh, corrected ordinances. Previously it was suggested that the ordinance had a lot of errors in its writing and such, so we should probably have that correct. And, and previously we know that there was a signature by somebody on the document as the adopted document uh, of which was actually a fraudulent signature because that person did not legally have that role at the time uh, and position that they signed it. So you have a, a flawed document there. Uh, the document itself had several changes from when you submitted it to the public previous on the ordinance, uh, and which some the commissioners approved and some were just written in by the county manager after the fact and, and then ultimately you commissioners, when it, the ones that approved it, went ahead and signed it as it was written and presented in front of you. Uh, there's a multitude of different things. I would suggest that you do some other reconsiderations and, and trust, and I know that's a big word, and trust the citizens to be able to really make a decision with all the facts. Trust them that they could actually uh, believe that, have it establish a firm site one of the provisions of the ordinance was removed because you wanted to be able to change it somewhere else if you wanted to. Be specific, have it only for the purpose of building a building. I know I use a term called revenue bonds. Make it a separate excise tax element. The idea is, is if you're gonna do something, let's, let's get rid of the old that's been wrong and was adopted improperly and start fresh and new with a clean slate if you're gonna try to attack it. Otherwise, we're going to be right back into dealing with these issues, and we're not going to, we're just going to delay it. And at this particular point, I'm not sure where I'm going with anything yet because I don't have any real definition where the county's going, but I do know this. It's September. We're getting close to the end of the year. And if certain things aren't resolved certain ways and with proper notice and letting people have comment time, then I won't have any resolve but to do it later on, and then perhaps it won't even be able to have an election time that's already was previously specified. So uh, I'd like some more clarity <coughs> given to me as to what the real intent is uh, as to where the commissioners plan to go forward regarding the proposed courthouse. Thank you. That exhausts the list of folks that have signed up to address the board. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board that hasn't yet? Good, thank you. And moving off the agenda, we're uh, agenda item number two, the county manager's update. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, thank you, commissioners. Uh, let me follow up with a public testimony you received last week from uh, Mr. Dory Miller. That was related to the Faith Harvest Helpers um, issue uh, related, um, located in the, along Case Road. And also you receive um, testimony today from Ms. Cindy Clausen on the same subject. Um, Ms. Clausen today uh, made the point the, um, the hearing examiner's uh, uh, hearing was uh, canceled or perhaps rescheduled, and that was the purpose of, uh, I believe, the representatives from the Faith Harvest uh, Helpers um, processing a permit, I believe they're trying to pursue. And that related to the code violations, there's an active um, uh, enforcement that we're going through. And I believe his staff is looking for all the many different options to address uh, the known code violations on this property. Um, at some point, uh, the staff will come back to the board, uh, perhaps, with, perhaps with some options as to what um, the steps you may want to take or not. So that's all I can report on that at this point. And again, okay. it's an active um, code violation investigation. 
Any questions on that? Any questions on that? Any questions on that? Any questions on that? Yeah, I'm sorry, any questions? That's right. I was asking if there's any questions on that issue. So on a lighter note, um, Mr. Pettit made a comment of the uh, agenda setting. Thank you for attending this morning. And for the viewing public, we do live stream the agenda settings every Tuesday morning from 9 to just about noon and perhaps beyond sometimes. <laughs> and uh, as Commissioner uh, Edwards has stated in the past, that's where uh, the real conversation, the discussion, and vetting all the different issues really occurred. Uh, at today's board meeting, formal meeting, the items that you may be considering, um, they have been discussed for at least two weeks. Some items are taken out of the agenda, some items require additional follow-up uh, from you, and that is where the agenda setting is for. Uh, um, maybe over a year ago, we made the decision that in, in order to uh, be transparent with the citizens, and provide access to the citizens as to the business of the county commissioners in the county, we started uh, having a live streaming in a YouTube channel of all the agenda settings. And uh, either you can watch it live um, on, if you have the time, and also you can go through the record and, and just watch a video of past uh, agenda settings. The reason that I'm mentioning this, uh, the county just received a silver award and that is from the City, County, Communications, and Marketing Associations for the best YouTube related to the um, agenda setting. So congratulations to you. And to you and the staff. That's great. That's all I have. OK. Comments, questions? No. No, sir. Good. <clears throat> Thank you. That takes us to agenda item number three, consent items A through D. I would make a motion to pass consent items A through D. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve uh, agenda items. I'm sorry, consent items A through D. All in favor say aye. 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 That's done. Uh, agenda item number four, department items. We're moving into public health and social services. And this is regarding a uh, grant with the, for the developmentally disability Community Project Grant. And we have our Social Services Program Specialist, third degree, Jennifer popchak -Akim. Welcome. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, Jennifer popchak -Akim, Developmental Disabilities, uh, Thurston County Public Health and Social Services. So I'm here today to make a request uh, for board approval to initiate a request for a proposal process uh, for community grants, and these address areas of education and safety, community inclusion, personal growth and advocacy for people with developmental disabilities in our community. Um, so I'd like to start off by just giving you kind of a brief overview of the, the program that we have here in Thurston County. Um, so the first thing to note is that we oversee the program in both Thurston and Mason counties. And our program is funded, uh, has dual funding source, uh, first through a portion of property tax uh, on the assessed value of properties in Thurston and then Mason. And uh, the other source of our funding comes from two contracts that we have with uh, DSHS, the Department of Social and Health Services with the state. We contract with the Developmental Disabilities Administration and the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. So those are, those are how the program is funded. And so how do we use this funding? Um, one of the biggest pieces of work that we do is uh, individual supported employment. And um, that involves uh, individuals that that uh, a provider will work with an individual to obtain a job, to uh, assess the person's skills and abilities and go out there and, and help uh, locate a job for the individual and then support that person mm -hmm. on the job and then slowly fade back as that person gains skills and becomes adept at the job. So that's individual supported employment and Washington is a work first state and we believe in Washington that everybody can work. So um, that's the largest portion of the work that we do there. And um, the second piece would be community inclusion. And that's basically for individuals that have retired and um, 
providers will work with the individuals to get them out in the community and become a part of their community, contributing, volunteering, um, and just, just creating that close connection with community for individuals. Um, so some of the agencies, the, the, the third part is community information and education. And we have a lot of contracts with community entities like Parent to Parent, uh, Coastal Transportation, and Parent to Parent um, works <coughs> primarily with parents. They have a lot of different activities and services that they contribute to. But one of the pieces that I really like is their Parent Match, where they'll um, uh, say a parent moves into the area or, or just gives birth to an individual with developmental disabilities and they're looking for some support network. So parent to parent will try to match them with um, other parents uh, to provide that support. So I, I really like that aspect of their program. Um, we also contract with Coastal Transportation and they kind of supplement transportation for individuals with um, disabilities that are working or looking for a job or kind of coming out of high school and working on that transition from school to work. And um, they provide a, a great piece for us in connecting the more rural areas. Um, we also have, uh, who responded to our RFP last year, Arc of Washington, uh, People First, which is an advocacy group uh, here. And I recently found that we have the most robust advocacy group in Thurston County um, throughout the state. Uh, uh, they, we met with the ARC a little while back and they told us that Thurston County was, was the most <coughs> robust group. So that was kind of exciting to hear that our, our funding is going to support such a great effort in Thurston County. And we've also uh, received proposals for summer internships and job clubs, and that speaks directly to high school transition. So that's working with students, and a, a large piece of our work is that kind of subset of the individual supported employment high school transition, where um, we're working with those students to obtain a job upon graduation. So we had some proposals last year for job club and internships, which is pretty exciting. So we're looking forward to um, getting some of those same proposals this year. And like I said, we kind of broadened some of the categories um, to for the uh, education and the personal safety and independence. So we're really looking forward to um, seeing uh, what agencies apply. And I just want to quickly uh, run through the providers, the great providers that we work with that support us. We have Vadis, Morningside, CareerQuest, Exceptional Foresters, and recently Center Force. So they really um, uh, support us in, in doing the great work in the community that we do. Um, so I just again want to ask for your support in initiating this request for proposal for creative and exciting projects. Thank you. Do you have any questions or comments? Jennifer, when you were outlining the pieces, the first piece you said was individual supported employment. Correct. The third piece you said was community education information. I missed the second piece. Correct. Um, community inclusion. And that's mainly for folks that have retired that maybe had employment but uh, have retired. And we're just trying to keep them engaged and active in the community so that, you know, to, to minimize that uh, uh, kind of segregation and lack of inclusion. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments, sir? Well, I guess mm -hmm. I'd just point out that uh, a lot of people in our community have challenges, <clears throat> and thank you for all your effort, because that's really, we, we put a few, a few dollars in there, but you put the effort and commitment with you and your crew and I just want to thank you very much for I what you I appreciate that very folks. much, sir. <clears throat> Jennifer, how many uh, grants are there, and what, what are the amounts? Or what's um, the total amount? There's $375,000 for Thurston County and $95,000 for Mason County, and that's for a two-year time frame starting in uh, January of 2020. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad we're in, in Mason as well. That's... It's it's wonderful work. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion? Yes, I would move to authorize the initiation of the 2020-2021 Thurston Mason Developmental Disabilities Community Project Grants Request for Proposal. 
Second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? No, sir. Nope. Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion Thank carries. You, Thank you, Jennifer. Sure. Thank you. That's quite a, quite a title. Yeah. Agenda item number five, uh, CPED, Community Planning and Economic Development, setting a public hearing. And Maya Teeple, welcome. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon. Maya Teeple, Associate Planner with Community Planning. I'm here to request the board set a public hearing on October 15th, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. or soon thereafter to accept public testimony on proposed amendments of the Thurston County Comprehensive Plan as part of the periodic update. The Thurston County Comprehensive Plan describes the long-term vision for Thurston County, looking ahead to set the direction for the county's growth over the next 20 years. The proposed amendments to the Comprehensive Plan are part of the periodic update process under the Growth Management Act, RCW 3670A. The proposed amendments include chapters 1 through 10, chapter 12, the glossary, appendices A through F, and related maps. There is also one proposed land use amendment and associated rezone for the Evergreen State College, as well as new proposed zoning standards to the Thurston County Code, Title 20, to implement a major educational institution zone. The Planning Commission held 17 work sessions from May of 2018 through August of 2019 to review and discuss the proposed amendments and held a public hearing on July 10, 2019. The board held two briefings on this subject on September 4th and September 12th, 2019. The draft documents are available for public to review on the Community Planning's website, thurstonplanning.org, and a hearing notice will be published in the Olympian and interested parties sent a notice prior to the public hearing. Okay, questions or comments? As mentioned, we've been over this in work sessions. <clears throat> I was Several to times. a public hearing for October 15, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. <clears throat> at the Thurston County Courthouse, Building 1 in room 280 to receive public comment on the periodic update to the Thurston County Comprehensive Plan Core item. Second. Then moved and seconded to set a public hearing for October 15th, 2019 at 5.30 here. Uh, further discussion? <coughs> nope. No, All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you, Maya. Taking us to agenda item number six, uh, the commissioner is reporting on uh, the work that we've done in the last week. Commissioner Messer. Okay, uh, Tuesday, uh, I think we were all present for the ribbon cutting at SPSCC, Lacey's new uh, advanced manufacturing education center. So that was pretty interesting um, to see and be part of. On Wednesday, uh, attended an event at Panorama um, where they meet with elected officials just to kind of connect to that community, um, seniors and whatnot. Uh, it was a well attended event with a lot of, I think, all, again, all, all the commissioners were there. On Thursday, uh, attended the uh, Salmon Enhancement uh, Puget Sound, South Puget Sound Salmon Enhancement Group talk that they've, a monthly series, I think it was the final one for the summer. Um, it was uh, based uh, upon looking at uh, tidal um, influence and the way water move, a bunch of modeling that's been done by a professor at University of Washington regarding uh, Bud Inlet and uh, all of South Puget Sound in terms of movement of water, layers of water, was pretty interesting with respect to like our wa water quality issues in Bud Inlet. Um, learning that um, Bud Inlet is specific, despite all the human caused um, factors, uh, Bud Inlet, uh, the way the layers of water exchange and the sunlight and a bunch of factors is specifically predisposed to. Uh, to uh, grow you know, some of the, the you know, plant matter that, that causes then issues over time. Um, Friday, uh, taped the Thurston County Connection Program with respect to our culvert program. Uh, attended a program at the Juvenile Court, Seeds of Change, about their garden program, and attended a dinner uh, for awards dinner for American Legion Post out in Lacey, and was able to speak about uh, county programs related to veterans there. Saturday, attended the first responders picnic in Tonino, uh, and 
Yesterday, I had a meeting with the uh, Arnold Group, Ventures Group, that's putting together uh, the work on our risk tool, uh, static risk tool for our uh, criminal justice system, and give some input to them on that. <clears throat> Mr. Edwards. Well, I want to take just a moment. Um, I did my normal thing, you know, mostly it had to do with uh, water quality, although a portion of the week was spent on uh, the juvenile justice system that we have in place here. And, you know, for the viewing audience, we've got a facility over there with about 90 beds, and we've got less than 10 juveniles in that bed periodically, in those beds. So we've got about 80 empty beds that I'm trying to figure out a way that we can utilize the taxpayers' money better because we're going to go into the possibility of an expansion at the county jail soon. So with uh, those, uh, with that, that was my desk and phone duty, I guess, and, and in personal appearances, and I want to compliment uh, Commissioner Menser. I also was at that veterans event, and he gave a very good presentation uh, using a quilt as uh, the analogy to it. It was very good, I will say. It told a good story. Anyway, I want to take a moment, though, to address Mr. Tibetan's issue. Here he is. He submitted a uh, HCP on this same property, had it approved, waited through the whole process, had it approved so one of his family members could build a house. Now he's submitted another HCP so another family member could build on that property. He's made five minor changes to the HCP presented to U.S. Fish and Wildlife and uh, doesn't even know yet if it's going to be reviewed or not. Well, and that takes me into this next issue. Over at Nisqually Middle School, over at Stillicum and Marvin, we've been waiting for over four years to upgrade a main intersection at uh, Stillicum and Marvin, and we've got $4 million set aside, set aside to put in sidewalks, crosswalks, turn lanes, and uh, here we are going into another winter. The days are getting darker and wetter. <coughs> I certainly hope we don't have a serious incident involving one of those kids <coughs> that are trying to get to school. And I contend that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, uh, those folks that are administering this uh, Mazama Pocket Gopher fiasco, do not care about the kids in this county. And uh, Department of Interior must not care either because this has been going on for a long time. It's a big hit to our citizens and we seem to be making less headway uh, than we did when we, at least when I first came into office in January of 17. And I can tell you it is frustrating to watch citizens go through this battle on a regular basis and uh, Mr. Tibet and I, I hope you'll live long enough to see your children live next to you. Thank you for your patience. That's it. Uh, I might add that uh, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife can uh, administer uh, and work out an HCP with an individual property owner in the county, and they have in the last, in the recent past, oh, yeah. last year or so. Um, but uh, as they, uh, Mr. Tibetan said, they, they, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, will accept an application or a, a plan for an HCP. That doesn't mean they're going to do anything with it. And they've chosen so far the path, we won't do anything with it yet, uh, or not even a yet. So anyway, uh, my heart again goes out to you, sir. As for my last week, I attended the Homes First uh, Heroes for Housing Breakfast, and uh, Great work those folks are doing in, in building uh, and supplying um, uh, very needy folks with, with housing in our county. I attended in um, my seatmate, uh, Commissioner Menser's Stead, the ORCA uh, board meeting, which is the Olympic Regional Clean Air Agency. Uh, and it was nice to see those folks again and interact with them. I also attended, as my seatmates did, the Panorama event meeting and greeting with not only the Panorama citizens, but first responders as well and other electeds. Um, and uh, I attended the, uh, um, the South Puget Sound Community College ribbon cutting at, um, uh, out at Lacey 
at the hub out there uh, at the EDC and uh, SPSCC's campus out there. They had a ribbon cutting for a new wing that was opened up uh, for advancing manufacturing, architecture, engineering, and construction technology. And what they have put together is nothing short of amazing uh, what they've done for students in, entering into that field. Um, and then uh, tonight I'm attending with the county manager the uh, APWA, the American Public Works Association. Uh, it's a re-accreditation dinner meet and greet. And uh, we were first, our public works uh, department was first accredited five years ago under the uh, tutelage or guidance of, oh, oh who was Romero Chavez. <laughs> so kudos to you, sir, and we're being re-accredited. And so thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to tonight's reception. Uh, and that's, that's all I have. Go ahead, Romero. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, commissioners. Let me walk you through your combined schedule for the upcoming week. The appointments included in my report is where at least two commissioners will be present. Uh, you may have individual uh, appointments on your individual calendars who will not be part of my report. Uh, beginning this afternoon, uh, I believe Commissioner uh, Menser and Commissioner Edwards will be attending the State of Hope in Thurston County, or at least you have been invited to attend. And that will be located in the South Puget Sound Community College and the Menier Center. Wednesday, September 18, tomorrow, uh, you will have a briefing related to the flex unit, and that will be the expansion of the county jail. At uh, 10 in the morning, you will have the yearly update uh, from the hearing examiners that will give you an opportunity to meet and greet the, the hearing examiner tomorrow morning. 10.30, you'll have a briefing on the proposed Tilly campus, sand and material storage in Tilly campus at South Parking. At uh, 12 uh, noon tomorrow, you'll have the opportunity to have a brown bag lunch with elected officials here in the county. And Thursday, September 19th, Commissioner Menser, Commissioner Hutchins will be attending the Thurston Mason Behavioral Health Organization Governing Board meeting um, at 1 in the afternoon and is going to be located in Mason County. Uh, Friday, September 20th, 8 in the morning, all three commissioners have been invited to attend the study. That will be located on the uh, Mr. Doug's restaurant at 210 Northeast 103rd Avenue, Yelm, Washington. Moving on to next week, nothing on your combined schedule, Monday, sep September 23rd. And then you will convene back here on Tuesday, September 24th uh, on the agenda setting we'll, where you will be reviewing the agenda for the board meeting in the afternoon. That's all I have for Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will add one more thing. The, tomorrow after the brown bag luncheon with the electeds, I'm attending uh, in Tonino the War Memorial Ribbon Cutting Ceremony. So if anybody is available tomorrow, Tuesday, I'm sorry, tomorrow, Wednesday, the, uh, the 19th, at 1.30 in the afternoon is going to be a ribbon cutting ceremony at Tonino. They built a beautiful, very honorable, uh, uh, I don't say spectacular, but short of spectacular uh, uh, war memorial down there in their park. It's beautiful. So I will be doing that tomorrow. But I'll tell you again about it next week. So uh, is there anything for the good of the order? No, Commissioner? sir. Commissioner? No. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.